I was born and raised in a Muslim home with Muslim family. My father, mother, everybody were all practicing Muslim. Um, at a very tender age, we, we always go to Islamic school where uh, we would learn to recite the Quran and learn about the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad. And I grew up in that environment. It was a very happy time for me. It was good because um, our family was very close-knit. But as I, I get older in my teenage years, and practicing Islam, I begin to see things differently and I ask a lot of questions which at times were not answered, but I still, um, it didn't really bother me that much. We would go to the mosque every evening and we would keep the month of Ramadan and we would keep all the Eid, Eid um, holidays and do whatever it takes to be a Muslim. Um, my questions were, were a lot. But I still kept with the religion because that was what I was born with. And as I grew older, it meant more to me to be a Muslim, especially to be a Muslim woman. And um, I was very proud of it. And um, But um, one of the things that bothered me was that I was very fearful as a Muslim of death. And um, I, um, because of that, and. Um, the language barrier with, with the Quran being Arabic and I speaking English, um, I couldn't, I feel that I couldn't communicate with God. There was not a communication between me and God. God was very distant to me as, as, as a Muslim. And, um, I didn't feel it at growing up. I didn't feel that distance between me and God. But as I get older and I search more, I felt that I was so far away from the God of Islam from Allah. I was exposed to Christianity at a very young age when I was 11. My brother accepted the Lord. I mean, at that time I didn't know what it was, but he was very close with me. And when he would go to church, I would go with him. And although at that time I didn't know who Christ was, I just enjoyed going to Sunday school. So as I got older, and especially when I got married, I got married to a Muslim family also, and it was more so um, required of me as a married woman to keep going to the mosque and to keep all the traditions and to keep reading my namaz and keeping fast and all of that. But um, like I say, I enjoyed it, but in a ritualistic way. It, it, it didn't mean that much to me again because all my prayers were recited. The morning prayer, the, the midday prayer, the evening prayer, it was all recited. Even even though we had a translation, it was like, I just go in and reading a book and come back out, you know. There, there was no connection between me and my God. Even when I pray, there was nothing there. But I, I really, really did not feel a connection with me and the God I was serving. I couldn't feel it at all. But I, I didn't mention it to anyone because I was afraid to um, to tell anyone. But... There came a point in my life that on a particular day when I really, really was at a crossroads. And I remember distinctly, I was in a mosque, we were doing the evening namaz, and um, I was praying, and I just wanted to talk to God in my own language. And I was so confused. While I was battling with this in my evening prayer in the mosque, the words of my Sunday school teacher came to me that if you ask anything in Jesus' name, he will give it to you. And that point was when I say, Lord Jesus, I, and I gave him all, all the burden that was in my heart that day. And I really felt relief. Just to say Jesus that day meant it made a difference. It was like I felt a connection to someone out there. And, um, that was a turning point for me, although I did not share it with anyone in my family. My instinct that evening, I remember, was to turn around and run out of the mosque, but I couldn't do it. Because to my right and to my left were my husband's cousins, and I knew I couldn't do it, so I stayed there. But when I went home in my own closed door, I was so happy, but I didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell my husband or anyone. But that was my breaking point for me, a way to talk to God, just to talk to Jesus and to pour my heart out to him and to tell him all that I want. It makes a big difference in my life. I still keep going to the mosque and um, I um, still keep practicing Islam until um, 
it was getting to a point that I couldn't do that anymore. I really couldn't do it. I was so yearning to go to a Christian church. All I wanted to do was go to a Christian church, was to read the Bible and hear about Jesus. And um, when I got that chance, the preacher was preaching, and he was just telling how we were born sinners. And then I realized that I needed Jesus. And then that yearning that I was feeling, you know, I, I knew that this was what I wanted. And um, the assurance of salvation was what really touched my heart, that if I put my trust in Jesus, and he would forgive my sins, and I'm on my way to heaven. At, at the end of his preaching, the preacher was asking that whoever wants to accept Jesus in their heart, don't wait that tonight is the night. And that was when I decided to go up there and publicly tell them that I want to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And they prayed with me. And um, But even though I did it there publicly, it was a personal thing that was going on in my heart for a long time. But I found a relationship with the Lord. E even at the beginning, I knew that this Jesus, that, I was, that um, my Savior, that he was so close to me than Allah, who I was serving, because he was always distant. That night, I really, really knew who Jesus was, and that he came and, and died for me, and a sinner like me. Um, my life has changed so much, so, so much. Because if, if anyone knew me as a Muslim, I don't think they would want to know me, <laughs> who I really was. And I didn't change overnight. It took a long, long time for all the different changes to, ha um, to take place in my life. I was a person that had a very, very bad temper, very angry person all the time, I guess, because I grew up with a stepmother, so I was angry all the time. I hated my father for years, but after I read the Bible and Christ said we must forgive, I really prayed and asked God, can you let me forgive my father? It took me a year, but I really felt when I forgive my father that I did. And if it wasn't for Jesus, if it wasn't for the Bible, I would not have been able to forgive my dad. And um, I, I, I really changed as a human being. My whole outlook in life changed gradually. I became a nicer person. I, uh, um, I, I became more, more understanding. On, on the whole, um, but I see life different. I, and it didn't happen overnight. It took time, especially when I, I read the Bible, it, and words just open up to you, and, and, and the way Christ taught. And even Psalm 139, when I read it, and it says that we were, I was fearfully and wonderfully made, that even when I was in my mother's womb, God knew who I was, who I was going to be, and He knew all my days. And you know, life hasn't been easy. Um, not because I accept Christ, I, I, I live a, a stress-free life, happy. All, uh, there is that joy, but life has been one trial after the other in, in, in my life. But God has took me through all. He didn't take my trials away from me, but he took me through every step of the way. And with each trial in my life, I get to know Jesus more and more, and I get to experience his love more in, um, in my life. When I was a Muslim, I didn't know that I was a born sinner. I didn't know that I had sin in my life because all I was taught was that if, I be, if I'm a good person, if I keep the seven pillars of Islam, I read my namaz, I keep the month of Ramadan, I give alms and I be a good person, that that is what Allah wanted. But yet again, that was one of my questions, when I die, where I will go? And no one could have answered that question because even my, my teacher that taught me the Quran, she says it's up to Allah where we would go when we die. And that used to bother me. And, and one of the, um, the things that left me was my fear of dying. Because no one knew, but I was so fearful of dying when I was in, in Islam. And um, I, I knew that day when I give my heart to Jesus, that if I should die, whatever time, I'll be with my Lord in heaven because I have that assurance and I did not get that assurance. In, in, um, I remember in Islam, there was no mention of sin at all. It was all like wrongdoings. If you do something wrong, but if you keep, keep the month of Ramadan and you give your arms, it would be covered over, you know. But if you, when yeah, I start to think logically, how can this be possible, you know? Um, 
Well, like I've shared with, with my family because they're all still Muslim ex except one brother. And um, that, that I think most of them have a, has a closed mind that who Jesus is because in Islam you cannot associate anyone with Allah. And to say that Allah had a son is, is like they say, unclean. So um, my, um, my thoughts for them out there is that um, if, you, if you really seek God, you will find him. You have, if you really seek him with an open mind, because we cannot convince anyone who Jesus is. It, it, I think it's an individual thing that someone has to be really searching, really searching for who God is. And if you look in the right place, if, give, I, I would just say, give Jesus a chance. Just read about who he is. Open the Bible with an open mind. And most of all, pray and ask the Lord, is this true what these people are saying who Jesus is? And I could tell you without a shadow of a doubt, God will let you know who Jesus really is. That he is our Savior. The only way to eternal life. There is no other way. There is, is absolutely no other way. To have eternal life or to have the assurance that if we should die today, we'll, we'll go to heaven. No, no other way. No other religion will take us there. Nothing else. Only, only Jesus. He is who he said he is. And we, we just have to believe it by faith, you know. And, and like I say, if we will only stop and think, when this life is over, what next? What next? And when I was an, uh, um, a Muslim, there was no answer for me, what next? But now that I trust Jesus, I know that what next? I'll be in the arms of my Savior. I'll be in heaven. <laughs>